Today I want to talk to you about a tool that you've probably been using already if you're familiar with Lightroom, but you may have not thought about using it in this way. And so today I want to show you uh, a different way of thinking about this tool or how you could set up this tool in relation to your photograph, especially if you're dealing with an image that has some really kind of weird angles to it. Uh, a lot of times you might see this in a landscape uh, such as this image here where you have mountains in the photograph that are un uneven or maybe even an architecture shot where you have elements that are uneven. This trick can uh, really save the day for you. So we're going to jump into Lightroom and show you exactly what it is I'm talking about. And the tool that we're referring to today is the graduated filter. So what you might already know is that you can apply the graduated filter from you know from the top of a photo you can uh, use it from the bottom of a photo or even from the left or from the right uh, of, of your image but we're not actually going to use it in any of those ways we're actually going to use it um, at a diagonal instead of the traditional like top down bottom up uh, sort of thing uh, but the the key is is the thing that you might not know is when you add a, a graduated filter to your photograph you end up with this little pin and what you probably don't know is that you can actually move this pin around and when I'm dealing with an image such as this one that's exactly what I like to do let me let me show you exactly what I'm talking about if I hover over the pin, I can actually drag this pin and move this pin anywhere that I want to. And the reason that it does this is because this pin acts as a pivot point. Think of it as an access point, kind of like a seesaw, right? If you're sitting on a seesaw with a friend, this pivot point or this pin becomes the axis at which the seesaw rotates. And so if I move this pin, to say another part of the photograph, I'm gonna move it way up here in the upper left hand corner. What I can do now is go to the other side of this middle line. And if you look real closely, you'll notice that the arrow or, or plus sign has now gone to like what I like to call is a like a boomerang arrow or a rotating arrow. And I can click and drag and rotate this whole adjustment at the angle which makes sense to the photograph. In this case, I have this mountainside that's pretty steep, so I'm going to adjust this. And if I turn my overlay on, you can see exactly how this is being affected. In this case, whatever is green is being affected, which means that this is actually backwards. So what I want to do is rotate it around so that it goes more like this. I'll move the pin up here and then I can kind of move this into position where I want it. And from here, I can make any necessary adjustments that relate to this photograph. Once I have the graduated filter exactly where I want it, the adjustments are, you know, to your discretion. For example, in this photograph, um, I might want to, you know, add a little bit of uh, a little bit of warmth or a little bit of color down here. I might want to maybe boost my clarity, add some sharpness, play with my shadows and exposure. And, you know, just like that, I can, I can make some, some changes, necessary changes to this photograph. I'm going to do it one more time because I have the other side of the photograph that isn't being affected. So I'll choose a new grade graduated filter and I will click and drag and move this pivot point up here and then I can change the angle at which I want this to be. There you have it. Turn the overlay off and then make my necessary adjustments. As a little added bonus, if I have you know these repeating angles, even though one is on one side of the photo and the other is on the other side of the photo, instead of going through the work of trying to duplicate um, all the settings a second time. If I delete this graduated filter, what I could do instead is the very first graduated filter that I used, I might choose to right click and duplicate it, which will allow me then to move this pin 
where I need it because the settings that I applied on the left side of the photograph have already been determined. I, I don't want to have to go through all of that work when I can just duplicate this graduated filter, move it to the other side, and then maybe just tweak the adjustments, you know, slightly. So maybe maybe the, the, the shadows are a little, you know, bright. So I'm going to pull those down and maybe, you know, reduce the clarity a little bit. And, you know, that's it. All the other adjustments that I did to the left side, I actually like the way they look on the right side. So the trick here is to use that pin as your pivot point. And then if you have another part of the picture uh, that isn't getting any love, just duplicate the graduated filter, move it over and readjust, you know, using your pivot point trick there. So hopefully you enjoyed this tip. Um, I find it extremely useful. I use it all the time and uh, hopefully you'll add this tool to your tool bag. Thank you so much for watching. My name is Adam. I'm out.